What I'm showing you in this chapter is how to expand your possibilities beyond just rectangles and ellipses and polygons. So if I go to File and Open, I come down to Chapter 9, Folder 4, Custom Vector Shapes. So here's an ad that was already started. And I really like how they did this red shape down here. So I want to kind of mimic that look. I'm going to unlock my template layer, click on this big scan, and I'm going to lower the opacity right up here. I'm going to lower that down so I can kind of work on top of it. I'll set it to about 40%. Then I'll just lock the um, bottom layer again. Photo would go here. Uh, my bottom custom shape would go here. The top red bars would go here. My text. But I'm really concerned with bottom custom shape. So I'm going to zoom in on this. And what I want to start with is just a basic rectangle. So I'm going to take this shape right here because I just want to do a shape to fill with red paint. And I'm going to start in the lower left corner of that box. Just click and drag up all the way across. There's the height of the box and there's the width. Of the box right there okay D for default colors but when I click outside this box keeps going straight across I want it to come down and over so I have a couple of different choices I can click here and then take my pen tool I can add a point right there I can see the little plus next to the pen tool so I can click to add a point Oops, I missed the edge, so let's go to Edit and Undo. It's kind of tough. I have to select this and make sure I am right on that edge. It's kind of tough. So right there is the plus. Add a point. There we go. And I want this to come down and across to here. So I'm going to add a point on the side. Then when I take my white arrow, I can click outside then click on this edge, this corner, and just pull that down. And I'll just pull it straight across right there. Now I can click on the fill, and I can fill that shape red, just like they have in the ad. But that's kind of tricky. I like how they opened that up for the space of this motorcycle's wheel. But that was kind of tricky, adding anchor points. So I'm going to take my black arrow and delete it. And I'm going to draw that box again. Just click and drag all the way to the height and all the way to the width right there. Then what I'm going to do is draw another rectangle. I'll just start it right here in this corner. Click and drag up and over. Perfect. All I need to do now is take my white arrow. I'm going to click and drag a box right over that corner. Click and drag that corner until it matches that angle right there. Now with my black arrow, I select them both. I can fill them both with color. But now I go to Window, Object and Layout, Pathfinder. I'm going to subtract this second shape from carving into the first. And there is an even quicker way to develop really unique vector shapes here in InDesign. Now, what they also have is I'll lock that layer and just turn it off for a second. They have text that fills and comes down at this angle and then comes underneath. Remember, when you go to draw with your uh, text tool right here, you're only going to get rectangles. So I'm just going to click and drag like this all the way over to there. And just to test this out to see how text would fill that box, I can go to Type Menu, Fill with Placeholder Text. This is just going to be what they call Lorem Ipsum. It's Latin text. Can't read it. Okay, so that at least shows me what it would look like. I can hit Command A for select all the text, Command T 
and let's set this type to Arial. So I'm going to highlight the name of the font right there, A-R-I. Let's do Arial Bold just so we can see it. We'll make the font size come down to 10. Yeah, let's go 9. All right. That doesn't really fill out the whole space, does it? So I'm just going to come in here and do it again. Type, fill with placeholder text. There we go. Good. Easier to read. All right. I'm going to go to my paragraph panel and let's justify the text so it wraps to all the edges here. We'll turn off my hyphenate. There we go. But when I turn on the bottom layer, that text is just going to fly right out of the box. So here's what's great about InDesign. I can click on a text frame, come back with my pen tool, and start adding points here as well. So I'm going to first just knock this down a little bit more, bring it down like that, because I want a couple of lines here. All right. Now I take my pen tool. I can add a point right here. And now I can come up here, add a point kind of on this angle right there. And just like I showed you before, if you take your white arrow, you click outside, then click on the edge of the text frame. And now I pull that corner in to kind of match the angle of what's going on here. And my text will wrap accordingly. That looks kind of cool. Let's just lift this up a little higher. There we go. Get a little more words in there. Um, if I hit W, there we go. Turn off the text in these layers. Well, they have white type. So I can take my black arrow, click on this text frame, go to my swatches. And if I click on the fill, I do not want to fill the box with white. I want to fill the type with white. So I click on the T to format my text, click on the fill, and I'll fill it paper or white. Okay, if I come to the paragraph panel, I've got a drop cap. Let's just start hitting the up arrow here. There we go. All right, cool. Kind of like what they did right there. Well, they got four lines for their drop cap, but whatever. I could click here and change that to four. All right, so now I know how that original designer did it. They did a unique vector shape, drew a text frame on top, and with their pen tool, they pulled apart the text frame. Kind of reverse engineering tricks from the designers out there. There you go, custom vector shapes.